How do I change the speed and torque of a motor? In most competition robots, the speed of the motor is too fast and doesn't have enough torque to be able to complete the action required. In most applications, you'll need something to go between your motor and your mechanism that can reduce the speed and increase the torque. The most common way of changing out a motor's speed for torque is using gears. For example, this is a gear that can go on a redline motor and it can pair with another gear to decrease the amount of speed and increase the amount of torque proportionally. This gear is a 12 tooth gear. This gear is a 40 tooth gear. When they mesh, when the output gear is spun one time, the small gear is spun 3.3 times. This creates a gear ratio of 3.3 to one. Alternatively, if you drive the larger gear with your motor and a smaller gear on your mechanism, you get what's called an overdrive because when the motor side gear spins one time, the output gear side has to spin 3.3 times as fast. One thing to note about gears is when they mesh, the gears spin in opposite directions. This can be useful if you want two shafts to spin in opposite directions, or you can use a series of gears to get the outputs to go back in the same direction. So here we have two different diametrical pitch gears. On this side, we have 20 DP gears, and they have a much larger tooth, which are better for higher load applications, but they're pretty large. Over here, we have 32 DP gears. They've got much smaller teeth, which allows the mechanism to fit closer together. Teams would be wise to note that a 32 DP gear and a 20 DP gear will not mesh correctly. There are many ways you can change the speed of your motor into torque. One way is to use a gearbox. Here, we have a bare Neverest motor. The output of this motor will spin about 5,000 times a minute, but it won't have a whole lot of torque. By putting a planetary gearbox on the end, we can decrease the speed and increase the torque by a factor of 3.7. Planetaries are great because they're stackable and they can allow for a large reduction in a very small packaging. There are a lot of planetaries available in the FRC marketplace. The way a planetary works is the input gear kind of acts like a sun. There are a bunch of planet gears that rotate around the sun gear which react with a ring-shaped gear pattern on the inside of the gearbox. Now, as these are a defined size and number of teeth, they cause the different gear sets to move at a different rate. And because these are stackable, that rate is multiplied throughout each stage. In addition to planetary gear styles, there's also open gear styling, such as this Evo shifter. In this example, we have a sim motor with a pinion on it driving a gear, and this gear has multiple other gear sets inside of it that is activated by a cylinder. Teams can elect to use a multi-speed transmission such as this when they want large amount of torque and fast acceleration on a low end speed and then transition to a higher end speed with less torque. This could be really useful in open field games in which you want to be able to get around really quickly and accelerate fast from the starting line. Another way to change out your motor speed for torque is using belts and pulleys. Here we have two 5mm HCD pulleys. One is metal and one is polycarbonate. And this one should be 24 teeth and this one should be 42. So the way a belt and pulley works is there are teeth on a pulley that engage with a tooth belt. So these work out really nice when you want a smooth and clean power transmission method that is very efficient. The distance between the pulleys is really important. If it's too loose, your belt can skip. If it's too tight, your belt can stretch. Similarly, teams can use chain and sprocket to drive their mechanisms. This is an example of a number 35 plate sprocket. It's got larger teeth, which are more adept at handling misalignment between the chain. Here we have a number 25 sprocket, which is smaller, meshes with this number 25 chain here, and it's more compact. As we can see, chain works very similar to a belt in which a, the tooth feature of the sprocket engages with a groove in the chain. One advantage to chain is it has a high load rating and additionally can be spliced together after the fact, which can be really useful for mechanisms that are already put together and you need to install your power transmission onto them, as well as creating the correct length chain run to go between your mechanisms. There are many ways to change speed and torque on your motors. These are just some of the more common ones you'll see in a first environment. And that's how you change the speed and the torque of a motor.